I call to order this regular meeting of the City Planning Commission and we'll begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendations on land use and zoning matters. Any final action on conditional use permit requests taken here tonight are final unless appealed to the City Council. Any final action taken here tonight on preliminary subdivision plans will be referred to the City Council for their public hearing on June 15, 2009 at 7 p.m. Any final action on rezoning requests, major amendments, or ordinance amendments taken here tonight will be referred to the City Council for their public hearing on Monday, July 6, 2009 at 7 p.m. Council meetings are held here in the Car Carnegie Town Hall and these public hearings are televised. Any final action taken here tonight on a final development plan or minor amendment for a planned development district is final. At this time, the Planning Commission will hear and approve the consent agenda and the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, Planning staff and the Planning Commission applies the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the City's 2015 land use plan. Second, planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. Before I read the um, consent agenda items, I would like to welcome two new planning commissioners tonight. Um, we have on my left, way at the very end, Mr. Mike Roth, and at the other end, <laughs> On my right is Mr. Steve Gaspar. Welcome. Okay, we will now hear the consent agenda items. Number one, approval of May 6, 2009 minutes of regular meeting. Number two, plats. Number three, 2009 0506 free zone from the RS2 residential district to the sub area A of the Sanford USD Medical Center plan development district at 1202 West 22nd Street. Number 4, 2009-0508, a rezone from the RS2 residential district to sub area A of the Southeast Technical Institute plan development district for allowed uses at 4101 West Maple Street. Number five, 2009-0503, major amendment to subarea B of the Prairie Hills North Plan Development District to add a truck wash and service as an allowed use at North Granite Lane and West 60th Street North. Number six, 2009-0501 special use permit in subarea A of the Beacon Center Plan Development District to allow an on-sale alcohol establishment at 4829 South Louise Avenue. Number 7, 2009-0502 conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow a full service restaurant within 100 feet of a residential use at 811 South Minnesota Avenue. Number eight, 2009-0505, conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow motor vehicle sales display and service at 601 West 10th Street. Number nine, 2009-0507, a conditional use permit in the RS1 Residential District to allow a family daycare at 5837 South Frontier Trail. Number 10, 2009-0509, conditional use permit in the RS2 residential to allow an electronic sign in a residential district at 7301 South Louise Avenue. Number 11, 2009-0510, conditional use permit in the C3 Central Business District to allow an on-sale alcohol establishment at 204 South Phillips. 
Are there any objections from the audience to any item listed on the consent agenda? Sir, would you, could you step to the microphone, please, and, and state your name? Okay, and that was item number nine? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That will be number one on the list then. Okay, are there any um, other objections uh, by any of the Planning Commission members to any item listed on the consent agenda? Okay, if there are no objections, uh, I'd like to request a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Test. Okay, now we are looking for a motion to approve the items on the, on the consent agenda with eight and nine being moved to the regular agenda. Madam Chair? Yes. A motion to approve the revised consent agenda. I will second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Are there any objections by anyone in the audience to items on the regular agenda? What about 16? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you. Any objection to what? Let's see if this one works. Mine's working. Oh, yeah. No, it's not. This one's okay. This one. At least then the audience can hear as they speak. So that it will be able to go off since those two work and staff are here on this one. Okay. Since this one's working. Okay, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, I think we need a motion to um, approve the regular agenda with 13, 14, 15, 16 deferred, and 19 withdrawn. Madam Chair, so moved. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, let's move forward with the regular agenda. We will hear item number, item number eight from the consent agenda is now moved to item number one on the regular agenda. Well, good evening. You know, uh, 
Forgive me if I don't look at you, I guess. <laughs> uh, the first item is a conditional use permit for uh, motor vehicle sales, display, and repair in the C2 General Commercial District. The applicant is Kefialu Gerdved, or Blue Nile Auto, and uh, he is requesting to display used cars and have repair services on the site. The location is 601 West 10th Street, uh, about a third of an acre in size. Uh, when we're discussing conditional use permits, uh, motor vehicle repair shops shall provide an adequate number of parking spaces to store the cars and shall provide appropriate areas for storage of parts and or materials which shall be screened from view. And their motor vehicle sales uses shall be designed in a manner that encourages display towards the lot interior rather than towards right of way for the majority of the inventory. As you'll note, this site is a fairly old site and um, has had several uses on it in the past. The applicant is requesting to um, have an additional uh, or a new car or used car dealership at this location. One of the things about this item is that the subject property is located within the Pettigrew Heights neighborhood, which has been a focus of revitalization efforts by various city departments over the past three years. In addition, planning staff is currently working with neighborhood representatives to develop a neighborhood plan. Neighbors in this area have strongly indicated their desire for commercial and office properties located on the major transportation corridors in the neighborhood to incorporate landscape and design enhancements to their site. In this location, there are two options for enhancement of the site. The first is that the site should be brought into compliance with current landscape requirements, which includes five trees based upon street frontages along West 10th and South Duluth Avenue, or that they landscape the intersection safety zone as defined by Chapter 1551.170 of the Zoning Ordinance, which, include, which would include the removal of asphalt in that triangle and the planting of grass and shrubs not exceeding three feet in height. Um, the call that we received on this item was a concern that there may be outdoor storage of parts and uh, inoperable vehicles on site. And staff feels that it would be appropriate to add, to add a condition onto this approval that would prohibit the uh, outdoor display of, of motor vehicle parts and inoperable vehicles. We have spoken with the applicant about, about that condition and he is understanding of it and, and is okay with it um, from, to, to the extent of my knowledge. Um, so because the application has provided clarity to in, indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed and requires a complete plan check by zoning and building services prior to obtaining a building permit, we are recommending approval of the conditional use permit with the following conditions. The first is that the applicant or owner shall install the required street trees along West 10th Street and along South Duluth Avenue for a total of five trees, or that the applicant shall remove all asphalt located within the intersection safety zone and plant with grass and shrubs not exceeding three feet in height. The second condition is that bumper blocks shall be installed for all parking stalls. And the third is that there shall be no outdoor storage of parts in, 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 in inoperable vehicles. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant present? Would you step up the microphone, please, and, and give us your name and address? Thank you. Yes, just. My name is Kefia Business number 601. Okay, any questions? Do you understand the stipulation to your petition? Okay. okay, thank you. Anyone in the audience wishing to address this item? Okay, if not, we'll call for a motion. Motion's been made and seconded to approve this item. Any discussion? If not, all in favor of approving item number eight? Um, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes.
Number nine. Item number nine is a conditional use permit for a family daycare uh, in the RS1 residential district. The applicant is Lindy Brashear. The lot is about a quarter of acre in size and the location is at 5837 South Frontier Trail. The conditional use permit standard when we're considering uh, a family daycare is that a safe, healthy environment for the person is of primary importance. Applicants shall remit their authorization from the City Health Department prior to conditional use permit approval. Daycare centers and family daycare shall be located in areas where an adequate and safe playground with sufficient green areas can be provided, where safe access to the use is available, and in areas where such uses will be convenient for their clients. Daycares that have between 7 and 10, 12 children are considered family daycares under the zoning ordinance. The applicants indicated that she expects to have anywhere between seven and eight children uh, on the site and that she'll be operating her business from 8 a.m. to 5.30 or 5 30 p.m. And um, oftentimes, one of the considerations that we have to look at is that um, in, mo in most cases, a family daycare is allowed an administrative approval, which is called permitted special use, if they're able to secure 75% of the property owner signatures within 250 feet of their site. In this case, seven of the 20 properties within that area have not yet been developed and the applicant was unable to secure the signature of the developer. She has attached a narrative that um, was included with your application material and that's where she states her expected hours of operation and that she expects having more than seven or eight children. She has completed the Department of Health requirements and obtained her certificate and, we have, and has provided for a safe and enclosed play area by fencing in her backyard. We advise the applicant to discuss her application with her neighbors, and uh, we are recommending approval of the conditional use permit. So, and I do believe that there are neighbors here that would like to. Uh, I think the mics are on. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I guess they are. <laughs> okay. Well, that should be a little better. Um, so, anyway, that concludes staff report. So. I believe that the neighbors are here to address some concerns as well as the applicants. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. So, Madam Chair? Yes. I've got a couple questions for sure. you. David, did you say that if 75% of the neighbors within 250 feet right. were to be in favor of this, would, would it even be being brought no, it would not. here tonight? No, it's a permitted special use. It's a what we consider an allowed use with con with certain stipulations. If they're unable to meet those stipulations, then they have to come forward for a conditional use permit. And so, um, and the, the signature of 75% of her of the neighboring property of the neighboring property uh, would would allow her to get an administrative approval. So, and she was unable to secure that. So. Okay. And you said part of the reason was because that's undeveloped? Yeah, part of the reason was because it's undeveloped and the developer, um, she was unable to secure the signature of the developer on that. So even if even if all of the rest of the properties had signed off on it, she would still be here because the um, number of properties exceeded 25% that were, that were undeveloped within. David, I think we're going to have some conversation about covenants. Would you explain to me and the rest of us here the city's position as far as covenants on developments? Well, the city doesn't, um, when, the, when a private development comes forward, the city does not approve, regulate, or enforce private covenants. We enforce our zoning ordinance, and according to our zoning ordinance, this is an allowed use um, by conditional use, so it would have to get planning commission approval, but it is allowed within this district. So, so no, uh, no consideration is given to that as far as whether we is not allowed in the covenants. No, the we, city's position is, hey, that's correct. We look at a land use perspective, and so um, we look, is this an appropriate location for this land use? Private covenants are, have to be dealt with by the covenants that were in place and secured at that time. Thank you, David. Yep. Any other questions of Dave? Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Could you please step forward and uh, give us your name and address? I'm Lindsay Brashear, and I live at 5837 South Frontier Trail. Okay. Any questions of Lindsay? Lindsay, have, have you uh, 
had you talked to the developer about your desire to have a daycare center here or ask for his permission to sign off? Yes. Um, well, it's running enterprises, and I talked to Chuck Point with them. And um, he says he had no objectives, but they just really didn't want to get involved in it. So they referred me to come to do this. Okay. Thank you. Just a moment, Lindsay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone in the audience wishing to address item, this item? Mr. Breidenbach and members of the board, thank you very much for hearing us. I'm here tonight with some number of neighbors from the area. Excuse me just a moment. Um, would the neighbors uh, here for this item please raise your hands? Okay, thank you. This neighborhood development has approximately 55 residences, and I can state unequivocally that there is overwhelming opposition to this matter. If you look at the map, the house appears to be relatively isolated. However, that is 69th Street, running east and west below that uh, subject property, and it's Deer Park Trail, thank you very much, uh, running immediately north and south. In the letter I sent to Mr. Loveland, which I'm not sure you've all seen, first of all, we uh, uh, oppose this based on the very clear uh, violation of the covenants and restrictions. Uh, the paragraph I referenced uses the words, quote, residential purposes exclusively. And this is totally inconsistent with that. We, we excuse me just a moment. We do have a copy okay, of the good. letter. So if there's anything in there that you want to. Very good. Thank you. Um, guide us to. All right. Feel free. The second issue, knowing this board's uh, concern with safety, health, and those kinds of related issues, I pointed out or attempted to point out the situation regarding the streets. First of all, Deer Park Trail runs north and south. It is effectively the only street into this division which feeds into Deer Park Trail, Copperhead Drive, and Frontier Trail. With 55 residences with between one and eight people living in them, there are probably at least 200 people living there. Uh, the daily traffic count on Deer Park Trail alone is significant, uh, besides the fact you have delivery vehicles, garbage trucks, things like that. Of more concern is 69th Street. Recognizing the board is extremely busy, but if there's any consideration given to approving this before that's done, I would urge some of you to drive through this section. 69th Street is virtually a freeway, east to west or west to east. There are no traffic controls between Minnesota and Western. The limit is 40 miles an hour. Traffic uh, consistently goes 45 to 50. As one goes west from the east, there's an elevation decline uh, just east of the uh, Deer Park Trail turn-in. You can't see what's coming. And I didn't mention in my letter two other things I looked at today. One of them is, and one of uh, uh, our neighbors pointed out, when adults try to walk across uh, 69th Street, it's a real test. You look both ways, pick a spot, and then run across there. Uh, little people could, simply couldn't deal with that. Additionally, there are two left turns. One of them is you're going west, uh, turning into, I think it's um, Heather Ridge is the road, and the other Deer Park. It's virtually a head-on situation with cars moving or uh, trying to turn left. I know the argument will be made, this will be very secure, we'll, we'll be very careful of our children, but I can't help but remember Part of my background was five years in the Air Force legal department called the uh, JAG, and my life was sort of like the show on TV, but not really. But when we were in Fort Worth, Texas at Carswell Air Force Base, our son John, who was somewhat adventurous, uh, even with all the security, and I know there wasn't security at the, uh, the base nursery, but John, at the age of between three and a half and four, was the only guy who ever made a break for it and escaped from the base nursery. So. The point being, and there weren't AK-47s or guard dogs at the base nursery at Carswell Air Force Base, but regardless how careful you are, little people can be very inventive in, 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 uh, uh, in, in getting out. That's, that's a problem. And that's a bare lot uh, from the, uh, the subject property to 69th Street, and it's, it, should, it is and should be a very serious concern. 
the last thing is this is really a matter of neighborhood integrity. Um, there are no businesses there, no daycares there. Um, with all respect to the applicant, who I'm sure is very well-intentioned, it is simply inappropriate in this neighborhood. And once again, if any consideration is being given to take this to the next step or approve this, I would urge one or more members of the board, busy as you are, uh, to, to look at this area, and it's simply inappropriate uh, for a daycare center or any other business. This is a business, plain and simple. It violates the covenants and restrictions. Uh, if there's any question about it being a business, it's a commercial enterprise. It requires inspections, licensing. It's a business. And I'd very much appreciate the consideration of this board in uh, denying the uh, application. Questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Doug, uh, thank you for the comments. Uh, this is kind of a dilemma for us, and this isn't the first time we've had to deal with issues like this with, with daycares. Uh, I believe you're an attorney. I am. Uh, would not the covenants give ye the neighborhood the right to civilly stop whatever our action might be? That's correct. That is the remedy. Uh, and I say that knowing the city's position and, and our position as far as covenants. It, it, it's a pretty tough deal sometimes to say no to daycares because there seems to be a, a, a need for them. Uh, and some are certainly well-intentioned. Uh, that being said, no matter how the vote comes down, I think whatever we decide, you'd, yes, up or down, both parties would certainly have the opportunity to go to council uh, if they don't agree yeah, with I, it. Yeah, I appreciate and I would that. assume that yeah. your neighborhood would have the right to do something civilly. Sure. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? Madam Chair. Madam yes. Chair. Doug. And I might ask Jeff to come up here. I, I know that uh, it was quite some time ago that, that I was involved in one of the study groups uh, specifically tasked with uh, working on the daycare ordinance for the city of Sioux Falls. And you showed us a map where you had identified daycares throughout the city. And how many hundred are there? Um. Jeffrey Schmidt, representing planning staff. The, we did have a study group that put these ordinances in place, and as Dave mentioned, the permitted special uses versus the conditional use process. The health department regulates all daycares in the city of Sioux Falls, and right. they keep a master list and an address. Your specific question to us is, is there a map? Health department has that. Planning department and Dave Loveland is why I look back. Dave thought that question might come up today. He looked and tried to get the information. He may have the numbers. I'll refer to him if he has the numbers. But planning office does not keep the sheer numbers um, or the map because it's not our charge. But I think Dave has some of the numbers that we thought the question might come up. I did inquire, and there are approximately 148 in-home in -home daycares. I didn't have a number for the actual uh, daycare centers that are run as. Those are the only, those are, uh, th that number represents those that are licensed. Yes, those are the ones that are licensed. And, and there are quite a few that are not licensed. The point that I wanted to make was that the health department, uh, I think all the planning commissioners share your concern regarding safety. And uh, I, I echo Kenny's uh, uh, comments as it relates to the covenants and the fact that we don't really enforce covenants. But in terms of safety, we certainly uh, know that there are a lot of daycares within the city limits that are on streets as busy as 69th or maybe even more so. Uh, and that's something that the health department regulates, again, more than we do. So while we appreciate uh, the concern over safety and locale, uh, we have a great number of these that are in similar uh, uh, locations. So. Any other questions? OK, thank, thank you very you much. Can. Anyone else in the audience that wishes to address this item at this time? 
And I would encourage you, if there is someone, just let's just make sure that it is new and pertinent information. Okay. I do have a question for the petitioner. Lindsay, would you mind coming up, please? Lindsay, you understand that we, we deal with land use issues only and whether this is a proper land use item. Mm -hmm. But knowing that, and, and recognizing the fact that you have a significant number of your neighbors here that are not in support of your enterprise, um, and knowing that beyond here there there are remedies for them to, you still want to proceed with this. Because if should we deny this petition tonight, you can't come back before us for six months. If you choose to defer it and try and work something out with your neighbors, you can always come back again next month. But should we deny your petition, not come back for six months. Um, I'd like to go ahead and go with it, but can I say something too? Um, you know, most of them were supposed to be approved within the 250 radius. I'm just wondering, like, how many of the neighbors that are here objecting of it are even in the area that matter? Because the few I talked to didn't have a problem with it. The few out of the 15, you know, I think I talked to three or four of the neighbors. And then one other point I wanted to just make out. Um, the dropping off is not anywhere near 69th. It, well, I mean, it's near, but it's in the front of the house. There's two gates. So um, they spent a lot of money putting that fence up to make it a safe area. And um, the two gates are right in the front of the house. So, with, And we're going to put locks and everything. So, I mean, their kids won't be able to get out. But I understand it is a busier street. But I would like to go ahead and go with As long as you're there. May I, may I ask you one question? Sure. Were you aware of the uh, covenants when you built or bought your house there? Um, I was not. I never got a sheet of the covenants. We just ran in this situation a while back with the shed. But the covenants is not listed um, with the city or the counties. So they said, I mean, out of respect, but I didn't know there was anything about businesses. No. The one I said says something about no chain link fences, no sheds, and a couple of other things. I was not aware of that. Thank you. Any other questions of Lindsay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, call for a motion. Madam Chair, I, I move that we approve the motion with the conditions. With the condition of, um, I'm a little lost here. With the condition of a, uh, I apologize. I, I, I move we approve the motion. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? For the sake of discussion, I'll second that motion. Okay, now we're open for discussion. Well, oftentimes I am, um, I'm the one that supports, the, is it a proper land use? Does it put the land use in? Mm -hmm. um, just recently we had a very similar item like this um, on the other side of town. And um, again, it was two busy streets close to a school, but um, do I think daycares are needed in neighborhoods? Absolutely. Um, is safety an issue? It does, as it appeals to land use, I believe that that is true. Um, but there is an awful lot of neighborhood opposition to this daycare being there. And I, just as we listen to our neighbor, the neighbors that appeared before us the last time, um, I would encourage them to try and come together to see if there's something that they can work out that's agreeable to all of them. Um, I'd prefer not to deny a petition. I, I always want, would prefer that the neighbors can come together and find some workable solution that, that is best for all of them. Are you suggesting a deferral, Jesse? I, I would be able to support a deferral before I would be able to support anything. 
Anything. See, I'm just not sure. I don't know what a deferral might or might or might not accomplish. I, it may not be. I, I think everybody that's here is not in favor of it. Or I, I guess I should ask: Is anyone here in favor of the daycare at this particular location? And I know our our, our deal our, deals with land use. Whenever I see this number of neighbors come up, I, I feel that needs to be listened to also. Uh, and I know my good friend Meredith is, is, is not going to agree with me. Uh, but land use, there's a lot of different facets, I think, to land use. I think a lot of people moved into a neighborhood uh, under the assumption that there was not going to be any businesses in their neighborhood. If this young lady could have gotten around and gotten 75 percent support of this, it wouldn't even be here. And I kind of agree with that methodology. Uh, if, if, if you can't get the 75 percent support, that's an indication from the neighborhood that hey, it's not something we're specifically want to have in the neighborhood. And that being said, I, I, I'm not going to support it. Uh, I'm going to vote against it. And not that I have any problems with daycare centers or churches or dance studios, but I think you have to have some neighborhood support to have a venture like, like those. And I think, Ken, that the uh, these neighbors will civilly enforce the covenants. That's that a foregone well conclusion, I, I think. I don't know. Madam Chair. Yes. I uh, am, uh, I guess, a little bit more black and white than Kenny when it comes to land use. And uh, certainly in this case, I see the neighborhood has another remedy. Uh, so as I look at this, I say that it falls very closely uh, on, the, on the tail of all of the daycares that we've approved, even with neighborhood opposition, uh, when we looked at them purely as a land use. Uh, now, I, I also agree with Kenny when he says that uh, it's much easier if they can get 75 percent support from the neighbors. But in this case, if we do approve this from a land use standpoint, I hate to jeopardize future petitioners uh, that uh, where we all of a sudden have to start counting uh, percentages of neighbors that approve or oppose uh, the use. Uh, this neighborhood has, uh, I guess, because of the wisdom of some developer, incorporated a, co a covenant that uh, protects them. A lot of other neighborhoods where we've reviewed requests for daycares uh, don't have that protection and we have to sometimes look at that a little differently as well so uh, as a land use uh, this is no different in my mind than many of the others that we've approved elsewhere in the city of Sioux Falls uh, and so I would uh, vote to approve it knowing that the neighbors have uh, their own uh, recourse in the form of covenants any other discussion? Okay, there's a motion. Motion's been made and seconded to approve. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Um, who, uh, would you raise your hands who are opposed? Oh, okay. What? Yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> okay, all in favor, raise your hand, please. Okay, motion passed. Okay, moving on to number 12, 2009 future land use development to allow changes in future land uses to reallocate single family residential, multifamily residential, office and commercial, commercial 
future land uses at West 69th Street and South Tallgrass Avenue. Staff report. Good evening again. Uh, the applicant is Jason Bent Benton of Bentwood Place. Uh, the applicant is requesting changes to the approved zoning for this area and is requesting approval of a future land use amendment in order to proceed to that zoning step. The general location of this is on the southeast corner of West 69th Street and South Tallgrass Avenue. The area is 190.4 acres. Uh, to the north lies the 69th, uh, the zoning to the north is the 69th Street North Central Heart PD, which includes medical hospitals and offices. To the south is rural residential in Lincoln County. To the east is RS2 residential and ag agricultural uses. And to the west is the uh, planned development of the Sanford Research Park. Uh, because the subject application was, or because the subject property was zoned into the Bentwood Village PD prior to the establishment of the future land use amendment requirements, um, we in your in your uh, staff report you'll note that the that the comparisons of of uh, existing land uses and then the proposed land uses are are based upon the zoning to the proposed future land use. The applicant has indicated intent to come before the Planning Commission again and the City Council with a major amendment to their existing PD that would reflect the outlines of this future land use amendment. I mean, going through some of the some of the analysis of the site, you have before you fi uh, five questions that that the applicant was um, was uh, expected to answer. Uh, the first was that explain the reasons for the future land use amendment and how it is compatible with the existing and proposed land uses. The applicant indicated that the proposed zoning changes would be more compatible with future development of the Sanford Research Center and the continued growth of the North Central Heart Institute and Avera McKinnon Hospital to the north. Uh, the applicant references large, and our comments to that is that the applicant references large institutional developments in direct adjacency to the subject property. This, this portion of the city may develop a strong need for multifamily residential given the potential growth of large employers in the area and in addition, Spin-off or collaborative relationships among private companies and research firms may potentially create demand for additional office space. You'll note on the classifications, um, the land use classifications, that the proposal is, is a reduction of 24 acres of single-family residential, an increase of 15 acres of multifamily, nine, an increase of nine acres of office, um, about one acre of commercial, and then a decrease of about uh, just under two acres of parks and open space. Um, the request generally follows the city's policies for transitional developments from arterial intersections by placing commercial land uses at the corner and then transitioning back into the section with multifamily office and then single family residential. Harrisburg Explorer Elementary School is uh, located in the southeast corner um, of this area and the proposal would be surrounded by single family and then the school itself would be surrounded by single family residential by this proposal as currently it, it exists. Um, the applicant should work with the engineering office on water and sanitary sewer systems for this development. That would include pipe sizing and other pipe components that uh, need to need to still be worked out with uh, the public works office. 69th Street from Connie Avenue to Tallgrass is expected to be upgraded from a three-lane urban section and rural gravel road to a four-lane arterial with a landscape median. Uh, pending successful property owner negotiations, this project may, may yet move forward this summer. Because the subject application accommodates future land uses and proposed developments uh, should be consistent with the physical characteristics of surrounding neighborhoods, we are recommending of uh, we are recommending approval of this future land use amendment. And we've received no calls on this item, and that concludes staff report. I can take any of your questions. Any questions for Dave? Okay. Guess not. Thank, Thank you, you, Dave. Is the applicant present? Would you step forward, please, and give us your name and address? Yes, hello. I'm Jason Benson. I represent Bentwood Place, Incorporated, and we're located at 4600 Vista Lane here in town. So. Any questions of Jason? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wishing to address this item, please step forward. Good evening. 
I'm Craig Yoder. Uh, my address is 26988 Cactus Place, uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'd like to mention that I'm an active member of the I-29 Corridor Study Committee. I'm sure you're all familiar with what the committee is doing, trying to work out the complications of the intersections of I-29 and 229, uh, interchanges proposed at 85th Street, uh, tall grass going across and connecting with Solberg on the other side of 229. Uh, my big concern is there is a severe shortage in that area for land to put a proper interchange in. Everybody uh, that you talk to on the street comes up and says, oh, just put an inter interchange in at 69th. Uh, that's not a doable option, folks. Uh, you can call and talk to anybody down at the City Hall or the South Dakota Department of Transportation, or you can talk to Bill Tor, the consultant, the consultant uh, on the project. What I'm trying to bring up is if we're going to add a population density increase, and our committee is already wrestling with the increase we're going to have just from the Sanford projects and the proposals, are we adding to an already existing problem that we can't really get a handle on uh, with traffic control in the area? Um, I realize that Sanford's there and the hospital uh, is there and there's going to be a need for a housing increases there. But as a member of the committee, um, I don't uh, recall any of this information being brought forward about this zoning change, which is going to add more people to an already really congested area that they're having trouble, that we're having trouble trying to find an option on how to handle the traffic as it is. Uh, what I'd like to recommend uh, to the group is that we postpone uh, any voting on this until we can really find out uh, from the consultants and from the city as well as the state if this is going to affect all the work that we've done over the last year and a half trying to get proposals and objectives together to handle the traffic situation in this area. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, just a moment. Any questions of Craig? Yeah, Craig, I have a question of you. Um, Looking at what the existing zoning is that they could go ahead and start working on tomorrow mm -hmm. versus what they have proposed, there, there is 23 less acres of single-family residential in there. Correct. Um, so you are going to decrease the number of households in there by decrease, I mean, by a significant number if you're decreasing your acreage by 23 acres, almost 24 acres. That's correct, but the thing that we don't have and would, you know, would definitely change where I'm coming from is we knew what the multifamily consisted of. If there can, there, I haven't had a chance to read through it completely, but if the multifamily is, let's say, a big apartment complex, then your population density is going to change. No matter how many acres you're changing, it's the population density that we need to look at. So it's multifamily going to increase the population density or decrease it. Okay. I mean, granted, you're, it's a less acreage, but if you're going to put in a four-story high apartment complex, you'll put more people in a smaller area. Craig, the, oh, excuse Go me. ahead, Kenny. This committee that you're on, are, uh, is there any representation on this committee from the city? Anybody from engineering? Oh, yes. Um, I can't pronounce his last name. Sam? Yeah. Sam's on there. Sandy? I'm trying to think. The planning and zoning are on there. Planning, zoning, uh, South Dakota Department of Transportation. Uh, Bill Troll, the consultant engineer that they have. Uh, Federal Highway Commission's on it. Um, Southeast Area Council of Government or Government Council, I can't remember which it is, is on there. Yes, the city is well represented there. Was this particular item discussed at any of your meetings or was this kind of a... It's kind of a, it's a new one to me. Uh, the last meeting I didn't attend, but from the uh, minutes that I've got, um, there's no mention of it. Thank okay, you. any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Chair, would it be possible to talk to staff again? Sure. Jeff, does this gentleman bring up a concern that we should 
have some concerns about or be aware of? Um, I won't answer your question, but I'll give you some background. Um, if you go to the land use map, when the consultants in Sanford Bilcock are a traffic modeler, when they model how much traffic comes out of an area, they look at our land use. So this is what they're modeling. And just as Jesse brought up, they'll look at how much single family acres they have and they do 10 trips per each single family house and they look at how many commercial acres they have and how much traffic comes out of that in office. So they model how much traffic's gonna come out of this map. Well, since then, this has been updated to the zoning and the zoning doesn't reflect very well because when you look at the zoning map, it shows as gray, but there's actually more commercial in there and there's more apartments. So that's what's currently in the model. That's what Bill Troll's using and Sandra Bill Cocker's using. It's a lot more apartment and commercial. Now what you see in front of you today, this map, this has not been modeled. No, this is something that's in front of you today. So would they model a future land use that hasn't been approved or hasn't been looked at? No, it's just something that's being proposed to you. Um, the I-29 corridor study group would not be modeling and looking at something that's being proposed. They've modeled the future, the land use that you saw, the zoning, they know what traffic volumes are coming out of there, not everything that gets proposed by every developer that comes in to the city. So On the CIP, where, uh, and I, I, when is 85th and when is tall grass? Do you know what, what years those are, are planned for widening? Um, 85th Street has some improvements, like a thousand feet west of Louise, it's continuing to get improved. Tall grass isn't in our CIP at this point. There's not it's enough. Not? No. Um, 69th, 69th and tall grass, the overpass is in our CIP, and that's been in our CIP for the last five years. We're trying to get that improved so there's not so much congestion on Louise and 69th Street. So we're trying to get, as Mr. Yoder mentioned, tall grass to Solberg, to the north there, over the interstate. It's an overpass. We're trying to get that done. We did that in conjunction with the Department of Transportation so that they could continue to address some of the issues that Mr. Yoder mentioned about going west. How do you do 69th Street, 85th Street? Um, those are the issues they're still struggling with. And last, we all heard in the media and with Sanford was the DOT said, there's no money, there's no right of way. We have issues down here. So they decided not to use any of their um, stimulus funds or any of their funding to do any improvements down here. Just the Stuff. That, would that be 69th or would that be 85th? Either one. We, Either we're one. just looking for some type of help down in this part of town, and the DOT said not at this time. So there's no improvements from the DOT. Engineering staff and everyone doesn't have a problem traffic-wise with this continuing on its path. Can you be more specific with this future land use or this delay of road improvements? We have very we have concerns with the delay of the road improvements. Yes. There needs to be road improvements done down here. I, I, I can't answer whether or not we have concerns with this land use because it has not been modeled. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Any other questions of Jeff while he's up here? Okay, thanks. Anyone else in the audience wishing to address this? My name is Deb Yoder and I live at 26988 Cactus Place. Um, I learned about this two days ago when a neighbor received a letter from Bentwood Place Incorporated. And because I live a little further down on Cactus Place, and I believe because of your definition of adjacent properties, we were not informed. So one of the reasons that there may not have been phone calls is that because a lot of the people, the single family owners in that neighborhood, were not aware of what was happening. Um, I have a couple of maybe questions or points I'd like to address here. We established already the difference in the number of acres as we reduced the number of single family and put in the multifamily. When that area was originally annexed by the city, I believe at that time we were building approximately seven houses, single family houses to an acre. I am not sure right now what you would call 
or how many units you would be putting on an acre when you go to multifamily, but I would suspect you're going to have more than seven families per acre in, in that case. So what one of my questions or concerns would be, when you modeled this, how many families are really going to be in that multifamily area? How many units and how many families is that going to support? One of the other things I look at, because I live on Cactus Place, and at that, at that area, in that area, we are not annexed by the city yet. It's part of the gray area, and Cactus Place and Hanson Place, at this point in time, dead end against the southern boundary of the area we're looking at. <clears throat> Cactus Place and Hanson Place are both gravel roads that are privately maintained. I would suggest to you they're not maintained in the very best of condition, and they come out onto 85th Street, which is also at that point gravel, and I believe is maintained there by Delapri Township. So at this point in time, when you look at that drawing, you only see two access points coming out, and those are both unimproved gravel roads. And I would question what the traffic is going to be like on those gravel roads prior to the time that we're annexed and forced into the improvements that the city will demand of us. The other point is that because of the adjacency issue, um, I think that if other people in that area had been informed that there may be some questions of Jason and Bentwood Place. And I'm wondering what has been modeled, what do you really project for actual numbers, what your timetable is for the development, and what it, how it's going to impact the people that are, have not at this point been annexed but are going to be part of the, the main arteries going in and out of it. Because I do not see at this point, I don't remember any from previous plans, I don't know what the east-west arteries going in and out of excuse me, going in and out of there are, but right now you've got two north-south ones, and neither one of them are very good. Any other questions of Mrs. Yoder? I think, and Jeff will correct me if I'm wrong, I think what they're asking us to do is to look at this, not for development this second, but down the road. And once again, Jeff will correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there will be a development allowed to start in there until there are roads. I don't think they will allow. Jeff, am I wrong? Uh, at some point here, and it might be with a final development plan, I, I think what we're hearing it, with subdivision plan, it probably would probably be an awfully good idea for these landowners to have a neighborhood meeting where everybody gets invited, they show you how it is going to develop out, and what's going to go where. Uh, I think that's what they're asking us to do tonight, is not say we're going to start on this tomorrow, but someday what they, down the road, here's what we think we'd like to do. Okay. Um, along these same lines, that border there, that uh, the southern border of this proposed area, that has been annexed, and the gray area which has not, that is, at this point in time, the gray area single family. So if you put multifamily against that, is there, will there be a transition between the two? Again, I guess I'm asking questions about what do you foresee for the future so that we know what's going to happen. And with reference, sir, to your comment about a neighborhood meeting, if we go with the idea that you have to be adjacent to the property, most of the people in that neighborhood will not be invited to a meeting because the adjacency does not include the people south of Sunnyview Place. Or I would have gotten the same letter that my neighbor did. Good point. And I'm not, I do not want to suggest that something's being done behind our backs or anything like that, but I think that the people who are going to be impacted by this have not been informed based on the way we've set up the communication for this. Jeff will tell us I can't remember the number of feet I think you have to be. Is it 600 and six something, Jeff? The adjacency. To be, uh, to be notified? There, there is no distance for 
contact. If you were going to make me have a neighborhood meeting like you always do, right? Mm -hmm. How far out do you have to let we people don't, know? We don't state that. There is no requirement. We say you should have a neighborhood meeting, and then the property owners contact or the applicant contacts us and says, how far should that be? And if we, we don't state a distance, that's up to the applicant because just like this, the applicant can show up and say, well, I was five feet beyond that. Why didn't you kind of? That's between you and the applicant. So <clears throat> as you well aware, that's your responsibility to contact the adjacent property owners. Thank you. Okay. But am I correct in what I'm stating here, Jeff? This is a land use yes. Yes. proposal. There's this is, and we're going to start after developing this. There's a rezoning and a preliminary plan. Um, as Mr. Yoder mentioned, we need to see this so that we can model it and see what the impacts are. That's in the past, speaking to the choir here, but we would go straight to here's the, the lot layout, and everybody would go, what's the impact to this to our neighbor? Now, at least, if we can look at this, we can go, now we can start looking at the water, the sewer, the drainage, the roads, the trap. We can start looking at the impacts and come back and have that discussion. But we haven't done that yet because it's preliminary. But if we approve this land use, is that then final? No. The land use is final, but it's just a plan. Um, you still have to do a rezoning in front of this body instead of in front of city council to rezone the property, and then you have to do a preliminary plan, final plans, construction plans. I would like the neighbors to know this. Mm -hmm. no, I, I figured you knew it because exactly. you follow this process. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I absolutely understand that. So. No, it, because if we approve this, what, which I think I, I don't know, I don't want her to be concerned yeah. well, about not having some future input as to how this gets laid out, how it gets zoned in the buffering between single family and multifamily and such like that. I hope you can feel comfortable with that. As, yes, as long as this is just permitting a change in future use and not yes. defining that this is the future use and they're going to go ahead. Jeff? Because that, I would be very uncomfortable if this was saying, this will now be multifamily and we're going to go ahead okay. and do whatever. It, it's, it's semantics, but land use is the plan, zoning is the law. So we're going to change the plan tonight. We're not going to change the law. So can they then go ahead and do anything with it? No. But in the future, as your husband alluded to, we need a plan that goes, now we have an idea, but they still can't do anything with it. Now it's just, a, as you can see, now it's just a nice bunch of pretty colors. <laughs> but they have no authority or law to go by, so now can I go build apartments? No. Can I do it? No, you still can't do anything with that other than come back in front of this body. But I don't want to mislead you, so we do tonight have the ability to change the land use plan. One more question. If the body will let you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, the area in gray has not yet been annexed, and I know that at some future point it will. We knew that when we built our house 12 years ago. Is there at this point in time a solid timetable for when that's going to happen? Because that type of thing will impact us financially because we will pay for the sewer and all of the amenities and everything else. So is there a way to, to lay out the progression to have a sense of when we're going to get hit? That's a great question. Jeff's got the answer. <laughs> I, I don't like when you say get hit. Um, yes, you can talk to me about that too and we can communicate on that. There is no time frame for annexations. Um, property owners request to be annexed in the city of Sioux Falls or in time the city will do an annexation study to bring you in and we do not have time frames on any of those even the ones that have failing septic systems and need to be coming in we don't say oh and that's in two years so I, I mean honestly in front of the TV cameras tonight I've never even looked at this neighborhood for an annexation I just so there's other ones I have <laughs> <laughs> thank, you very much. Thank, you. thank you thank you for your questions and your concern Okay, anyone else wishing to address this item? If not, we're going to call for a motion. Madam Chair. Yes. I would love to make the motion for uh, <laughs> approval of this future land use amendment. Okay, is there a second? I have a second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there <clears throat> any discussion? Well, since the, this 
large parcel, parcel of property will come to us many times before I, I would encourage the neighbors to stay abreast and certainly I would um, encourage Jason to visit with your neighbors and get their information so you can stay with them at each point along the way as well because um, we're going to see him back here a lot in the next several months as he proceeds along so okay all in favor of mo item number 12 signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed item 12 passes item 13 Dave, did you want to do anything with the deferred items? Or did we just slide on through with that? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, my name is Steve Randall, uh, representing staff this evening. Item 13 uh, was a request uh, for deferral as some time ago it was deferred indefinitely until the applicant would have a chance to meet with staff and go over recommendations. Uh, so that's a continuation of a previous deferral. Uh, item 14 is the same way. Items 15 and 16 were requests that were received for deferral from the applicant and are noted in your addendum. Which brings okay. us to item 17. I was just going to say, okay, should we can move on to number se item 17. Okay. Conditional use permit in the C1 neighborhood commercial district to allow a drive up window at 500 South Cleveland Avenue. Uh, this application came to you last time, was deferred uh, so that the applicant could go to the Board of Adjustment to request a variance in parking. Uh, some of the neighbors who came to the meeting were concerned about the location of a drive up window on the side of the building. For the new members, I'd like to just summarize uh, the application. It was in a C1 uh, commercial zoning district which allows a drive up window by conditional use. Uh, the conditions on that uh, basically are uh, the impacts on the neighborhood in terms of traffic, uh, any lights, headlights going into the neighborhood, noise, uh, congestion, things like that. Some of the neighbors felt that uh, having the drive up window on the, on the east side of the building uh, was inappropriate uh, for safety concerns and also because of uh, uh, the proximity of traffic to their residents. <clears throat> they requested that the applicant and the Planning Commission consider um, a location of the window on the north side of the building. <coughs> so the applicant went to the Board of Adjustment because in order to get the window on the north side of the building they had to reduce the parking requirements. Uh, that Board of Adjustment action was approved and now the applicant has moved the window to the north side of the building. We've received no further calls from neighbors in the in the neighborhood, and staff is recommending approval with stipulations. We have talked to the applicant, uh, who has indicated that drive-up hours of business would be 8 to 11, and that there is existing existing security lighting directed straight down that will not impact the neighbors. And that speaker phones or menu boards are not proposed with this application. Those are the three stipulations, and staff recommends approval. That concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Any questions of Steve? Madam Chair, Steve, <coughs> with a board of adjustment, that's a public meeting? That's correct. Is the property posted like it is for one of our hearings? That's correct. So the neighbors certainly had an opportunity to go to that, mm -hmm. obviously must have. I noticed that the traffic will come in the alley. No, uh, the traffic, uh, as staff indicates on the screen above, that uh, stacking space shows the traffic coming in from 12th Street and that there is sufficient room to do that. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. Any other questions of Steve? Thank you. Is the applicant present? Robert Wentz with uh, Rue Properties, um, 500 South Cleveland. And I went to the variance board because the neighbors didn't want it on the east side, and uh, the neighbors did not come to the variance meeting. I discussed it. I called both of them, told them what was happening, and I don't think I see them here tonight. So, Robert, thank you for taking that extra step. I think it probably eased their concerns. And it's actually worked out better for me. Good. Good. Any questions? 
Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else in the audience wishing to address this issue? If not, I'm going to call for a motion. I'll move for approval. I'll second. Of item 17 with uh, the stipulations as stated. With three stipulations. Three stipulations. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 17 passes. Item number 18, 20090504, conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow a campground at 4501 West 12th Street. Staff report, please. Well, the applicant for this is David Billion, West 12th uh, Properties, West 12th Properties, LLC. The purpose uh, of this application is to replace a portion of an existing manufactured home park with a campground. Uh, the applicant has described to us a phase development of uh, expansion of this campground in the future uh, in the northern portion of the manufactured home park. The limits of that are indicated on the uh, exhibit that uh, you've been provided in your information packet and are shown on the screen above. It basically starts off in the center of the manufactured home park and meets the conditions of the current ordinance for campgrounds. The applicant has indicated a willingness to abide by future app, um, requirements of the of, uh, ordinance that is currently being considered by the city uh, with changes. A list of those uh, current requirements have been provided to the applicant. They've indicated that they can abide by those, and those are also listed in your report. Basically, that uh, has to do with street conditions, uh, side yard setbacks, campgrounds be supplied with water and sewage disposal, and so on. Because it is a current manufactured home park, the utilities are already in place. The applicant is not indicating any more density of uh, units than what is presently there for uh, locations of campsites. And so it's basically just kind of a, a physical conversion of existing sites to allow campers. In the future, the applicant may address uh, future plans with you this evening if you have any questions. We've received one call from a uh, resident in the manufactured home park who was concerned about the timetable, if they would have to abide by some timetable in order to leave the manufactured home park to make room for the campground. I suggested that they call Mr. Billion and discuss that with them. Otherwise, we've had no calls and staff is re recommending approval with condition that a revised site plan to address all conditional use permit standards for a campground use at the subject location. That concludes staff report. Any questions of Steve? Stephen, I'm sure you've shared a copy of that, that new campground ordinance. I believe that was had its second reading at last Monday night's meeting. Right. Uh, uh, Shauna Goldhammer, the uh, zoning administrator, has been discussing that with Mr. Billion. Very good. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions of Steve? Thank you, Steve. Is the applicant present? My name is David Billion at 3401 West 41st Street. Okay. Two Falls. Any questions of David? Hey David, this is an existing mobile home park as we sit here today that you're going to convert part of the existing mobile home park to the campground? Correct. Okay. David, parts of it are already a campground, is that right? On 12th Street, uh, adjacent property, there is a RV campground that is also um, owned by us. It's called Tower Campground. Okay. Um, the center of the property that we're talking about um, developing into RV uh, right now has three tenants on it. And... So we're trying to do it as disruptive as, or at least disruptive as possible to the tenants. So uh, we opted to do it in a phase just to, you know, lessen any issues with any of the tenants current. So that that north part of the park uh, has really been decimated uh, based on rumors of us developing it to a car dealership. So uh, there's been a, a pretty big uh, departure from that portion of the park so 
it would allow for us to continue to use it. Um, you know, and the, the, the camping in the summertime in particular gets tight in Sioux Falls. Thank you. I just think, David, uh, how hard it is to get a mobile home park started in, in town. It's unusual to see somebody wanting to change the usage of one, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there's, I'm sure it makes sense to do it. When it's vacant, it's easy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Dave. Thank you. Any other questions of David? Okay, thank you very much. Anyone in the audience wishing to address this item? If not, call for a motion. Move for approval. Ooh, sorry, go ahead. Move for approval of item number 18. I'll second with the one stipulation, Ken. Oh, well, yes, with the one stipulation. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion or item number 18 passes. 19 has been withdrawn. Item 20, 2009 final development plan in sub area C of the Rolling Heights Plan Development District to construct an office building at northwest corner of 69th and southwestern avenue. Madam Chair, I will stand down on this item. Okay. Uh, the applicant for this item is Chuck uh, Wiseman, Complete Contracting Incorporated. Uh, the purpose of the application is to uh, approve a final development plan to construct a multi-tenant office building on the subject property. It's uh, about three-quarters of an acre in size. It's currently an area that is being developed for office, uh, office uses, and there has been an, uh, oh, a past uh, rezoning subdivision plan and um, final development plans that have been developed according to uh, sub-area regulations that were approved at neighborhood meetings and uh, have been followed uh, closely uh, for the development of those projects. The applicable, applicable regulations and standards are included in your staff report. Uh, a number of them have to do with landscaping and setback, parking, parking being allowed in a private uh, roadway setback in the front yard. Uh, but you can see it, and it, it on the current plan and also if you've driven out there that uh, the sidewalks are set back far enough to accommodate the parking in the front yard off the private street. There's a turn, uh, kind of a turnaround, roundabout uh, as you go down the street, and so it's turning out to be quite a nice area. Uh, we did have some discussion with uh, uh, some neighbors who were concerned about the meeting of sub-area regulations that require landscaping improvements between the new office buildings and their residential properties. And they said that they would be present this evening to maybe present some of their concerns to you. Uh, but as far as this particular application is concerned, um, there appears not to be anything uh, undue as far as meeting the requirements of the final development plan. The sub-area regulations are in place, have to be met in order to get the uh, final occupancy on a building that has been constructed. Uh, we did meet with the developer of the properties out there who has actually hired some summer interns now to come in and, and finish up the landscaping uh, part of the agreement they had with the neighbors to buffer the residential uses and also has indicated that they will complete the requirements of the sub-area regulations as far as irrigation and, and landscaping as well. Other than that, uh, the final development plan in front of you meets the setback requirements. The applicant has provided a location of the berm, which was supposed to be a 25-foot minimum width, uh, but actually become, becomes larger because the residential property is at a lower elevation than the office property. And so in order to accommodate that extra, extra slope on the downhill side, they had to make the berm wider. And uh, that's indicated on the plan that they can meet the setback requirements and provide uh, the required screening with a four-foot high berm on the parking lot. Uh, the required number of uh, trees are located on the property. They have to adjust one location of a tree to get it into the front yard, but it's very close. Other than that, uh, 
We had a meeting on site with uh, one neighbor and the developer. If things went well, and that concludes staff report. Any questions of Steve? Okay, thank you, Steve. Is the applicant here, please? Um, Chuck Wiseman, Complete Contracting, uh, 6116 South Lindcrest. Any questions of Chuck? Chuck, it looks like it's going to be a nice building. Thank you. I got some space available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wishing to address this item? If not, we'll call for a motion. Madam Chair, I'd move for approval of item number 20. With, uh, I believe that's one stipulation, provide minimum four foot high effective parking lot screening. That's what I'm seeing too. Second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 20 passes. And item 21 is adjournment. So moved. Second. Meeting's adjourned. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. I didn't think anybody would.